Good morning. Let's see. I'm going to light a candle here. How you doing this morning? So, I have something serious to talk about this morning. Something that you may be able to relate to, or maybe you have a friend or relative that can relate to this. It's about anxiety. I think in this day and age, we especially see a lot of people experiencing various degrees of anxiety. So I was talking with my counselor yesterday and uh, she had told me, if you find that you have any recurrent thoughts, let's discuss those. And the other day, and now you know I am honest when I talk with you, and I think that one of the reasons people listen to my videos is because I talk about those things that most other people don't mention. Yeah. So, um, oh, good morning, James and Sherry. If you're watching, please say something. So, um, I, oh, hey, Anna Maria. Um, the other day, I found myself feeling, having these feelings, almost like <gasps> something's wrong. You know the sort of feeling you have where maybe um, you feel like you forgot something important and you, and you can't remember what it is? Or the feeling when, oh, hey, Lori, good morning. Do you ever have a feeling like you're being threatened? I don't mean physically threatened. I mean more like um, somebody has said something bad about you or is going to say something bad about you that's not true. Feelings like that, those kind of bad feelings. For I was having those sorts of feelings just all of a sudden for no reason. I mean, I thought it through. You know, I thought through, okay, is there, is there some reason that I'm feeling this way? You know, have I forgotten about something that I need to deal with? Is there a relationship problem? Um, you know, have I done something that I need to go back and fix? Um, you know, have I hurt someone's feelings? I, I just, you know, I was trying to figure out why would I feel this way? And I realized that there was no reason. There was no reason for me to feel like, oh no, no reason for that. So um, that happened to me several times during the day. And what I did is I just distracted myself, you know, by thinking about other things and doing other things. But you know what my counselor said? She said, that is a classic sign of anxiety. My gosh. And we discussed all of that and how to deal with it. And, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But I said to her, is this something I can expect to eventually go away? And she said, it could, but... It might not. And you know what? Hearing her say to me, this might not go away, this sort of thing might keep happening to me, it sort of was a relief because in a way, it, it made me understand, okay, this, for me, this might be a normal thing. Oh, good morning, Tamara. We're talking about anxiety. And she said there are many people that have this sort of thing happen to them. You know, we look at other people and we think that they look so together and like, you know, they're doing fine in life. Maybe look at me that way. No, you know what? It's what we do so often is compare our insides, how we're experiencing life 
to somebody else's outsides, to how they look like they're experiencing life. You know, um, somebody, and, and I've talked about this before, you know, the beautiful family sitting in the front pew of the church and all the children are dressed nicely and everybody, you know, they all showed up on time, not like your family that's straggling in all throughout the service. Um, and everybody, you know, is behaving and participating properly. Well, you know what? Um, I used to be, my family, um, when I got married and had kids, and we would show up to church on time, all dressed nice and sitting in the front pew and all that. That was because my husband was a sort of person where we had to get there on time. Now, sometimes he would end up leaving without us because we were gonna make him late. You know, when you have little babies, there are all, and little kids, there are all kinds of things that happen that can make you late. And what's the loving thing to do? To me, the loving thing to do would be for the husband to stay and help the wife to get everybody, you know, ready and in the car and to the church. But no, he would go himself so he wouldn't be late. So. You know, look at that. People would see him. Oh, he's always here on time and dressed so nice. And, you know, you can't tell by somebody's outsides what's going on inside. And trust me, inside we're all much more alike than we are on the outside. So... Um, how do we deal with anxiety, with the things that make us anxious for whatever reason? Um, or sometimes there's no reason at all. You know, like I just shared with anxiety. Sometimes you have this awful feeling like something is wrong or you're, you know, nervous or upset about something. And there's no reason that you can identify for it. Okay, so first of all, when that sort of thing happens, distract yourself by doing something else. It helps to change your physical position for one thing. You know, get up and do something, all right? But the other way is to practice calming exercises like, you know, I talk about breathing a lot. Some slow, deep breaths. The reason you want to practice that is so it will become a habit. And if you get anxious, you can switch into that slow, deep breathing and physically calm yourself. And when you're physically calm, it also affects you mentally. Plus, having extra oxygen getting to the brain from those deep breaths helps a lot too. So, you know... Sometimes we tend to worry, especially if we've never talked with somebody about a problem we're having. We tend to have added anxiety by thinking, my gosh, you know, am I nutty? I mean, golly, you never hear anybody else talk about this kind of thing. And, you know, I was very pleased to learn yesterday when I talked with my counselor that what I was experiencing was a typical sign of anxiety and that a lot of people have this happen to them. I was not some kind of, you know, weirdo nutcase or something. And the point is though that even if I was a weirdo nutcase, that there are things you can do about it if you go get help instead of sitting and worrying about it. Am I right? I'm right. So let's make some coffee this morning. Okay, first off, I need to get some sort of a cup, and I thought I saw, here we go, a nice glass one, so we can watch the coffee going into the milk, which is always fun, which means I need some milk. Okay, where's my milk? Here it is. 
I love the taste of this almond coconut milk blend. This is the Blue Diamond brand, but I also, um, I just haven't been able to find lately at the market, the Silk brand. Really, it's just very tasty. And I think the Silk is 35 calories, and this um, Blue Diamond is 40 calories a cup. So, you know, that's, that's fine to add to your coffee. Okay, I got to be careful there. Yesterday, if you were watching me, I lost grip on my coffee cup and uh, ended up dumping it all down my shirt. And, well, anyway. So, yeah, it's warm weather here. Right now, it's in the 60s, so that's why I was wearing a sweater. But it's going to go up into the 80s. Oh, and I got myself a new skirt because I was wearing the same old skirts like for three years, and they were getting kind of worn out. So this is a Columbia skirt. This, you know, sort of pulls down and you can pull it up higher. And it's like, you know, water resistant or something. Anyway, it's, it's a skirt actually. It's not a skirt, it's a skirt. I really like skirts. Up uh, for you men, a skirt is a skirt that has little shorts underneath it that are attached. <laughs> okay, so. Let's, oh, I haven't chosen what coffee I'm going to make. All right, let's go to my little spinner here. And, okay, gee whiz, here I am. Oh, you know what I found out about my Nespresso machine? I found out that if it's going to overflow, I can press the button to stop the water. I thought if I pressed the button that it would reprogram the machine, but no, to reprogram it, you press the button and hold it down. And then every time you make that particular coffee, you know, because remember, it reads that barcode around the capsule. So if you reprogram it by pressing that button down and holding it, then the next time it sees that barcode, it will only add that amount of water. So let's see here, this is Bianco Forte, which is made to have with milk, Hmm. We'll kind of live a little dangerously here. And, oh, you know what? No, I think I'm going to have vanilla custard pie this morning. I love egg custard. I wish I had a piece of custard pie. Okay, so let's make this coffee. So this is what we do. Okay. We put in the cap, oh, we remember to put the cup underneath. <laughs> oh my gosh. Close it, lock it, and then this shows us that it's heating up. We give it one press, and okay, here we go. We'll see if we'll get some, a pretty design this morning. Some of these coffees are um, intense and sort of, I don't know, they're heavier in the milk, so they sink down, and other ones kind of just layer up with the milk. It's fun to watch, and because I have so many varieties, uh, I, and I rarely drink the same one two days in a row, I don't remember how each one does, but it's fun to watch and see what's gonna happen. Ooh, isn't that pretty? We got the milk, we got the coffee, we got the crema. Okay, and I have got to stand by here and keep my eye on this because I'll have to push that button in case it's gonna overflow. Oh, look, it's starting to sink down in. I love watching this. Oh, hey, good morning, Diane. If y'all are watching, say something. Oh, Julie, you're watching. Hey, good morning to you. All right. Oh, this is so, I love it. I love it. Okay. Oh, it's going to stop before it overflows. Okay. Wow. Okay. So then I open it up. 
I eject the capsule, which goes down in there, and okay. And I'm gonna stir that crema in. You know, because I have a different kind of coffee every day, um, I never quite remember what I would like to put in the coffee. Hang on, Grayson. Or if I wanna have it just with milk or black. So, I always have to taste it before I put anything in it. Mm. Oh, this tastes really nice. Now you hear there, Mr. Grayson, He's saying, I want to go out. Do you want to go out, Grayson? You know, the, I've been, yes. Oh, what a sweet boy. You getting some of that coffee on, on your tongue? So, um, I'm going to need to start putting his food in a bunch of separate little things again so he'll take a little bit longer to eat his breakfast. Won't I? Won't I need to do that? Yes, because now we're going to have to go out and walk, yeah, like a half to three quarters of a mile. Yeah, and my coffee is going to get too too cold to drink. That's okay. I can nuke it. Yep. Well, anyway, so the dog calls. So listen, if you're having feelings, <laughs> hang on, Grayson, of anxiety, Find a good counselor and talk to them about it. It really, really helps. God bless you. Okay, Grace, and I'm coming. <laughs>